Amaswamy, let me turn to you. Uh, please make your case. Why would you, uh, why should you be the nominee and not the former president? I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here. And I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We have a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. Do you think the Democrats, and we've got Christian Welfare here, do you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Christian, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you in the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Robert. This is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with a Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramos, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn to Governor, Governor, Governor Christie. Why are you? Let's not do this. Let's, let's not do this. Let's let the candidate speak. Uh, go Mr. Ramaswamy, any daylight between you and the candidates we just heard in this issue on, on what you would tell the prime minister? Not in terms of what I would tell the prime minister, no. In fact, I would go one step further. The founding vision of Israel was based on the idea that they don't want to depend on anybody else's sympathy or direction in defending themselves. So what I would tell Bibi is that Israel has the right and the responsibility to defend itself. I would tell him to smoke those terrorists on his southern border, and then I'll tell him as President of the United States, I'll be smoking the terrorists on our southern border. That's his responsibility. This is our responsibility. That's how we move forward. But I want to be careful to avoid making the mistakes from the neocon establishment of the past. Corrupt politicians in both parties spent trillions, killed millions, made billions for themselves in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, fighting wars that sent Thousands of our sons and daughters, people my age, to die in wars that did not advance anyone's interests, adding $7 trillion to our national debt. And Joe Biden sold off our foreign policy. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, got a $5 million bribe from Ukraine. That's why we're sending $200 billion back to that same country. The fact of the matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the UN. Bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's going to put this country first, or do you want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? All right, Mr. In which case, we've got two of them on stage Mr. tonight. Mr. thank you. Jewish students across the country are threatened and under attack. What do you say to Jewish students on college campuses who feel unsafe given the dramatic rise in anti-Semitism? And what do you say to university presidents and college presidents who have not met the moral clarity moment to forcefully condemn Hamas terrorism? Mr. Ramaswamy, would you like to take that one? Absolutely. I think the scourge of anti-Semitism across this country, including at places like my alma maters and places like Brooklyn Bridge in New York, it's sad to see, but here's what history teaches us. Anti-Semitism is a symptom of a deeper cancer in a country, in a society that is lost. And we are lost. Several years ago, when I wrote my first book, Woke Inc., I was talking about they were chanting death to America, death to white people, death to Christians. Nobody was waking up back then. Now it's even bad. Now they're saying death to Israel and worse. So it is wrong, but we have to get to the root cause here. Now, I think it's really important that we do this through leadership not censorship. Leadership means fill that void with purpose and meaning. Dilute this wokeism and anti-Semitism to irrelevance. These kids, they have no idea what the heck they're even talking about when they're siding with Hamas over Israel. They are fools. But I also want to caution here, if we go the direction of Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, with whom I respectfully disagree on this issue, 
pro-censorship, telling student groups to disband. Mark my words. Soon they will say if you question a vaccine and its side effects, you're a bioterrorist. Soon they will say that if you show up at a school board meeting, you're a domestic terrorist. Soon if they say that J6 prisoners should be released, you're an insurrectionist terrorist. So that's where this road ends. We don't quash this with censorship because that creates a worse underbelly. We quell it through leadership by calling it out. These university administrators have lost their way, and we need leadership at the top in the United States of America that restores our founding values and that has no place for this kind of anti-Semitic hate. That's where I stand while respecting our Constitution. Your time is on this. Mr. Ramaswamy, are you persuaded by President Zelensky's urgent new plea? Where do you stand on more funding? I'm absolutely unpersuaded. And I'm actually enjoying watching the Ukraine hawks quietly, delicately tiptoe back from their position as this thing has unwound into a disaster. The first half of this race, I was the only person standing for it. Now they're actually quietly coming around to being more cautious as they should. Level with the American people here. Ukraine is not a paragon of democracy. This is a country that has banned 11 opposition parties. It has consolidated all media into one state TV media arm. That's not democratic. It has threatened not to hold elections this year unless the U.S. forks over more money. That is not democratic. It has celebrated a Nazi in its ranks, the comedian in cargo pants, a man called Zelensky, doing it in their own ranks. That is not democratic. More facts for you that you won't hear from the mainstream in either party or the mainstream media. The regions of Ukraine that are occupied by Russia right now in the Donbass, Luhansk, Donetsk, these are Russian-speaking regions that have not even been part of Ukraine since 2014, that other people probably couldn't name those provinces for you. Those are the hard facts. And so to frame this as some kind of battle between good versus evil, don't buy it. And I'd like the likes of the, the sharpest of the war hawks on Ukraine, Nikki Haley, to have some accountability and answer. Do you want to use U.S. taxpayer money to fund the banning of Christians? That is actually what's happening. They're using the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. They have banned them. The Ukrainian parliament just did this last week, supported by our dollars. And I think you owe it to the American people, Nikki, to at least this Mr. one time, Ramaswamy, at least condemn, thank you. That's time. At least Mr. Ramaswamy, their thank banning you. of Christians. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. Out of both sides Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. We asked the questions. <laughs> Ambassador Haley, what is your take on more funding for Ukraine? I am telling you, Putin and President Xi are salivating at the thought that someone like that could become president. They would love to the see The fact that. of the matter is she doesn't answer the question. So this is question. what I will tell you. We're driving is, Russia all, into China's hands because of you these had your time policies. To talk. Mr. Ramaswamy, I'm looking for specifics. What would you build? Where would you build it? When would they be in the water? How big would the fleet get? First answer is end the toxic divest to invest program. For people who don't know about that, we're decommissioning ships in the South China Sea. The foundation of war is economics. Rebuild our defense industrial base at home. But here's the dirty little secret. Our actual defense industrial base depends on China for the supply chain, for the F-35 jets, for the ships that we're building. Think about this. Why are we stockpiling that if it isn't to actually be strong against our enemy, China? We depend on them for that just like we depend on them for pharmaceuticals, just like we depend on them for semiconductors. So here's why we can't get tough with China. It's because we depend on them for our modern way of life. And we have to declare economic independence from our enemy. That's the Declaration of Independence that Thomas Jefferson, at the age of 33, would have signed. And today, if you were alive, that's the Declaration of Independence that I will sign as the next president. I do have to recognize that Ron DeSantis was correct about acknowledging Nikki Haley's tough talk when she was ambassador to the UN, calling China our great friend, bringing the CCP to South Carolina. What he left out, though, Ron, and be honest about it, there was a lobbying-based exemption in that bill that allowed Chinese nationals to buy land within a 20-mile radius of a military base lobbied for by one of your donors. So I think we have to call a spade a spade. That's we need politicians true. who are independent of the forces that increase our dependence on China. My message to Xi Jinping is this. You are done buying land in this country. You will not donate to universities in this country. U.S. businesses won't expand into the Chinese market until you play by the same set of rules. Mr. Ramaswamy, you're kicked out of the WTO, quality. and you actually have to have accountability for the COVID-19 pandemic financially, you, which unleashed hell on the world. We have to hold them accountable. Do you have a number and a plan? 
think that we need to increase our naval capacity by at least 20 percent over the course of the next several years. I think we have to, at minimum, be able to meet our AUKUS agreement standards. Right now, we are at risk of not even being able to meet our AUKUS standards with, with Australia and the UK. So what we need to do is have a plan that reverses the trajectory of the divest Thank to you. invest program Hugh, I'd like to by 20 percent over the next three years. Mr. Ramaswamy, uh, we've talked about this. You campaign on TikTok. How do you get TikTok banned if you use it? Well, I, I, I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters propping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy scum. answer is actually to say that we're just going to ban one app. We got to go further. We have to ban any U.S. company actually transferring U.S. data to the Chinese. Here's a story most people don't know. Airbnb hands over U.S. user data to the CCP. Now, that's a U.S.-owned company. So this is the problem when you have Republicans that temporarily go the way the winds blow, and now it's popular to talk tough on China when she was U.N. ambassador, called them literally her words, not mine, our great friend. You can't be fair-weather fans of the right policy. Get to the root cause. Even U.S. companies in Silicon Valley are regularly doing it. Cut the virtue signaling. The fact of the matter is Democrats are on TikTok today. The only person, one of the few people who is putting up content the way the actual algorithms work, speaking for pro-Israel views or others, is Ambassador me, Haley, uh, more Republicans will join it. But uh, stop U.S. companies from turning over data to Chinese companies. That's the real answer. Like, uh, the Kristen, signal. don't get to respond to personal attacks, but you do. Thank you very much. You know, when he talks about me praising China, he doesn't know the fact that the reason China was praised was because I negotiated with China and Russia the largest set of sanctions sanctions against North Korea in a generation. We are the, that is literally the reason North Korea stopped testing ballistic missiles. So I said China did good on their part. That was a negotiation you, said they were our you great could friend never is do. what you said, Nikki. Those are your words, not mine. And so just when, own up to you it. You would never you have been able to mind. get That's that allowed. negotiation done. But don't done. lie to the people about I what you've said or what you've done in China South Carolina. My entire you have brought them to South Carolina. Ron is right Nations. about that. Every day I fought China. Every day I fought China. And I did it Look at the by making sure no one could get any agency heads in UN. I did it by making sure that we called them out on human rights. I did it by making sure that we held them accountable on everything that they did. That's the reason we got out of Human Rights Council. That's the reason we I, called them out. And I have, there's not been a day I haven't Nikki, stopped. Governor Scott, was it, it is your turn. Mr. Ramaswamy. Made afterwards. Governor, thank you. Mr. Ramaswamy, weigh in on this. So you, sure. Ways that you can improve people's financial condition in the short term. Right. And as a CEO, the economic question is core to my vision and policy prescription for this country. Increase the supply of everything. It's the law of supplies and demand. Increase the supply of energy. That brings down the cost of energy, grows the economy. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Increase the supply of labor in this country. Stop using our taxpayer money to pay people more to stay at home instead of to go to work. Increase the supply of housing. People don't talk about this one in the Republican Party. The land use restrictions are constricting the supply of housing. That's making housing more expensive for ordinary Americans across this country. So that's the true answer. And I think it takes a CEO in the White House who actually understands this to get this done. Because Americans at home, they know the Bidenomics is a lie. Prices are going up. Interest rates and mortgages to buy your home are going up. But wages have remained flat. That's the hard diagnosis for our economy. And this is about more than just our economy. I say this as a member of my generation. I'm 38 years old. I'm the youngest person ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. The reason my generation has lost our sense of national pride in part is because people in my generation feel like the American dream isn't available to them. And part of the reason why is we burdened them with four-year college degrees that did not serve their head start on the American dream. People will be more proud of a country if we're all making more money in that country. This is how we revive national pride and our identity, and it will take a CEO in the White House with zero base budgeting, by the way, to take on Mr. the federal debt to get you. this job done. To Mr. Ramaswamy, have you determined if you would touch entitlements and Social Security? What, if any, reforms are you looking at? So this is really important right now. We're working within the last window I believe we will have 
to actually fix this problem while still leaving Social Security and Medicare benefits for current seniors intact. I'll tell you how. The other candidates assume, like Nikki, that it can't be done. And on her math, she's right about it. But her math assumes $7 trillion of our $33 trillion national debt going to fight wars like in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. Minus that, our national debt would be $26 trillion right now. Then you go to zero-based budgeting, which I've proposed as a CEO. It's how I've run businesses. It's how many CEOs run businesses. Don't use last year's budget as the baseline. Start with zero as the baseline and then ask what's actually necessary. 75% headcount reduction. Yes, that is severe in the number of federal employees in the Washington, D.C. bureaucracy. Shut down redundant agencies that should not exist. Deliver economic growth as a positive tailwind. I think we can get to three, four, maybe even 5% GDP growth if we really take the regulatory shackles off of our economy. And against that backdrop, I believe this is our last best window to be able to take care of our national debt problem through those severe measures, including sacrificing the foreign wars that many bloodthirsty members of both parties have a hunger for. That's the one secret for how we're going to be able to do this, and that requires discipline. So we can't have the first conversation we were having send in foreign aid willy-nilly to countries whose national debt per capita is less than ours. Thank you, But Mr. if we Ramos do this Swami. correctly, I think this is our last window, and it'll take a CEO from the next generation Thank you. to do it. Thank you, Mr. Special forces in Mexico shoot them stone cold dead at the border. One thing I just want to say in how we're talking about this issue is, you know, like Ron, I've actually met many parents across this country who have lost their kids to laced pharmaceuticals that have fentanyl in them. The right. only thing I would ask, Ron, I think you'd be on the same page with me on this. Let's not even call that an overdose. Right. That is not an overdose. That is poisoning. If you put that fentanyl in a Big Mac, we would not call that an overdose. You'd call it what it is. It's closer to bioterrorism. And I say that because as it re uniquely relates to this crisis, that does warrant more aggressive means to deal with it. So there's a new presidential election in Mexico in 2024. People may not be aware of that. It's going to be someone other than Obrador, who has been a disaster in Mexico. I think he's even mentioned me obliquely in speeches to say that somebody who would do this shouldn't get anywhere near the White House. Well, AMLO, get out of the way. There's going to be someone else in charge. I hope to build a good relationship with that next president of Mexico. We'll use our own military to seal our own southern border. What we need to do is stop using our military to protect somebody else's border halfway around the world when we're short right here at home. Get serious about protecting this border. And then the other thing that hasn't been discussed is the northern border. I'm the only candidate on the stage, as far as I'm aware, who has actually visited the northern border. There was enough fentanyl that was captured just on the northern border last year to kill three million Americans. So we got to just skate to where the puck is going, not just where the puck is. Don't just build the wall, build both walls. Can't just complete the wall, use the military to seal the Swiss cheese for the tunnels that they're actually building underneath that wall. Thank you, That's Mr. Ramos. practical and actually get this job done. Thank you. Kristen. Thank you, Hugh. Let's talk. Can we go to Mr. Ramaswamy. Would you support a 15-week federal ban? And what is the path forward on this? I, issue, I just Mr. wanted to say, I mean, Nikki Haley didn't invoke being honest. And I at least want to give credit to Tim Scott. He's honest about where he stood. And I think you should be honest, not making a political calculus, but to say, if a bill is served up, would you sign it? Here's my view on this. Speaking as a man, they say men have trouble speaking on this issue. I don't think we need to be that way. It was my home state of Ohio. I'm upset about this yesterday that passed a constitutional amendment that now effectively codifies a right to abortion all the way up to the time of birth without parental consent. Why? It's back to that Republican culture of losing. The Republicans did not have an alternative amendment or vision on the table. I know Ohio. I was born, raised, and I lived there. It's representative of the country. If in the state of Ohio we talked about access to contraception, adoption, and also here's the missing ingredient in this movement sexual responsibility for men. We live in an era of reliable genetic paternity tests that are 100% reliable. So we can say men deserve more responsibility. So we can tell women we're all in this together. It's not men's rights versus women's rights. It's about human rights. And I've come back to that case that Clarence Thomas spoke of. A pregnant woman walking down the street. She's assaulted. The unborn child dies in that assault. You find me one person in this country who says that that criminal does not deserve liability for that death. You won't find one. 
that says we share the same instincts on this issue, but we require, I believe, a different generation of leadership Swami, thank you. to actually lead us forward and unite the country on this thank with you. honesty. Thank you. We've talked a lot about foreign wars tonight, but we're in the middle of a war right here at home. It's a war not between black and white or Democrat and Republican. It's between those of us who believe in our founding ideals and love this country and a fringe minority who hates the United States of America. And I think it's going to take a commander in chief to lead us to victory in that war, who first of all knows that we're in a war, second of all can't be captured by the special interests along the way. But third is from the next generation, somebody with fresh legs to lead us to victory. I'll shut down the deep state. I'll declare economic independence from China. I'll keep us out of World War III and then revive national pride in this country. I also want to close with one message to the Democrat Party. End this farce that Joe Biden is going to be your nominee. We know he's not even the president of the United States. He's a puppet for the managerial class. So have the guts to step up and be honest about who you're actually going to put up so we can have an honest debate. Biden should step aside, end his candidacy now, so we can see whether it's Newsom or Michelle Obama or whoever else. Right, Just tell us the Swami. truth so we can have an Time honest debate. Up.